so here's another TV review for you. Um, while I was looking for the Rugrats Hanukkah special, which I have not seen since I was a small child and kind of want to see again as a grown-ass adult, I found an episode I didn't even know happened. Or maybe I just don't remember it. I don't know. I feel like I've seen every Rugrats episode at some point in time, but I really did not remember this one at all even existing. But right before the Hanukkah episode, they apparently also did a Passover one. I'm like, wait, when did that happen? Okay. So, despite what everyone seems to assume about me because of my name and my nose, I am not, in fact, Jewish. Hate to break it to you. Born and raised Catholic. Went to eight years Catholic school. But... Even in Catholic school, every single year, we acknowledged and celebrated the Seder and had our own version of Passover. Granted, we, like, scribbled red marker on a, like, index card and we're supposed to take it home and stick it over the front door and close enough and supposed to represent it. It's okay. It was for little kids, okay? But regardless, despite being Catholic, we still acknowledged it and celebrated it in a small way like that every single year school-wide. So, yeah, I know, for those of you who went to public school, this probably sounds really weird, since I know in public schools you can't do the religious holidays at all, which, boy, let me tell you my culture shock when I entered public school and that was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. No shock that I didn't last very long in public school before. I was like, I'm gonna be homeschooled now. But anyways, um, anywho. So this episode, basically, the whole gist of it is that Angelica's family and Tommy's family and Chucky's family, I don't know where the hell Phil and Lil were, but they all went over to Tommy's grandparents' house to celebrate Passover and do the Seder dinner, which was so refreshing to actually see that on a cartoon. I don't think I've ever seen that anywhere else. I was like, that is really cool that they went there, and um, both Boris and Minka got in a fight before anyone got there over which wine glasses they're gonna use for the dinner, and Boris stormed off in a huff. Minka's all upset and everything every time they so much as mention Boris's name because she's convinced that, oh, he left me, he left me, but obviously, no, he didn't. He literally just went up to the attic to get her wine glasses because he was gonna concede to her. But apparently it locks from the inside, he got himself locked in. But regardless, the babies one by one find themselves upstairs in the attic, mostly looking for toys, but they find him. So he starts telling them a story to pass the time, because they're locked in the attic, because every single one of them shut the door. <laughs> um, and all got locked in with him. So he starts telling the story of Passover. And obviously the details are a little changed. It's watered down for kids. Um... And they did it in a way to where those who know the story can totally see what was changed, but how fairly true to the story it actually is. I mean, there's very slight, minimal changes. Like, they had Pharaoh be the one that found Moses in the river, which I'm like, mm, not quite how that went. You're close. You're like, th this close, but... Close enough, I'll allow it. Um, instead of Jews, they've turned the term Jew into baby. So Pharaoh has the babies as her slaves. Because, of course, in Angelica's mind, she's imagining herself as Pharaoh. So, just every time they say babies, imagine they're saying Jews, and it's the story of Passover. It actually was fairly well done. They changed certain details to where... It's a little more kid-friendly, like, obviously, the actual night of the Passover, they did not have the creeping death. They just had it be that the firstborn child will be taken away. They didn't say how they're taken away, where they're going, or what else is happening to them, just that they're taken away. And Pharaoh, being Angelica, being a first and only born, is freaking out at this. Let me tell you, all growing up, hearing that tale, also being a firstborn, freaked me the hell out too, always, so, <laughs> yeah, that, but, um, anyone who's watched the Ten Commandments is like, wait, thought it was Pharaoh's kid that died during the Passover, not himself, but, okay, that's cool, again, I'll allow it, I'll allow it, um, 
since they are children and babies, I guess Angela cannot Angelica cannot have a child, but regardless. Um still it was actually really fairly faithfully done to the real story, just watered down in a way kids can understand it. I was like, that is really cool. I really liked that. Surprisingly. Like, I always loved Rugrats anyway. That was one of my favorite cartoons growing up. I still have a fondness for it to this day. But, yeah, I was just like, oh my gosh, that... I wasn't expecting it to be that well done, but it's really well done. So now I really, really am looking forward to rewatching the Hanukkah one, because I'm like, if they did that well with the Passover one, now that I understand what Hanukkah is, <laughs> I think I'll probably get more out of it as an adult than I did as, like, I don't know, like a six or seven year old kid watching it the first time it aired, but <laughs> um, or whatever it was. I don't remember what year Rugrats premiered, but I know it was like the first episode in the fourth season, so I don't know, maybe I would have been like more like eight or nine, I guess, but regardless, I was little, I didn't really understand Hanukkah, I knew it existed, I just didn't know anything about it, because that was one thing, you know, going to a Catholic school, we did not celebrate, we celebrated Christmas, but... Yeah, that. <laughs> so, my only knowledge of it for years was that one episode. So, I obviously know more about the holiday now than I did then. But it'll be interesting taking a look at it through a different lens nowadays than I did back then. So I'm looking forward to that. But this one, like I said, I did not know this one existed. So it was a very pleasant surprise just stumbling on that while trying to track down the other one. But I would highly recommend it. If you've never seen it, track it down. It is absolutely worth the watch. Um, I mean, maybe wait till a little closer to Easter <laughs> but if, if you want it to feel appropriate seasonally. But personally, I don't care. I'll watch things whatever time of year that I happen to stumble upon them. If it happens to line up with the holiday itself, cool. If not, I'll watch it anyway. It doesn't bother me one bit. I watch Christmas movies year-round. doesn't bother me any. So, <laughs> anyways. I know, this one isn't that, but I'm just saying, as an example, I'm babbling. I've had too much coffee already, and yet I'm still having more. So, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. But, takeaway, yes. This one, absolutely worth it. Absolutely recommend it. You should definitely watch it. Track it down somewhere. Watch it if you've never seen it. So, if you do remember it, let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments, just because I feel like it'd be an interesting conversation. So anyways, that's it for this one. So as usual, you guys know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe, hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload, leave comments down below, make sure you're following my social media accounts, my Facebook fan page, my Instagram, my Twitter, everything and more. It's all down in the description. And if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support, the donation link is also down in the description. Get your name on the end card for a month from the time of donating. Anyway, guys. Until next time, bye-bye.